Good morning and welcome to a very special story time. Today is the 10th annual Take Your Child to the Library Day celebration. We would love to be able to have you here in the building, but in order to keep everyone safe and healthy, instead we've switched to, to Take the Library to Your Child's Day. So I'm bringing this special story time to you in your home. Our summer theme for this year is going to be tales and tales, all about animals and stories about animals. I thought I'd give you a preview of that with this morning's story time. But before we get started, how's everyone doing? I haven't asked you that in a while. Is everyone feeling good? Are you sad, man? Let's get ready to sing. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Get ready to stomp those feet. If you're angry and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're angry and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're angry and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're angry and you know it, stomp your feet. Who's ready to read some books? If you want to read a book, say hooray. If you want to read a book, say hooray. If you want to read a book, let's take a closer look. If you want to read a book, say hooray. I have two books for us this morning. The first one is a book about books. Actually, they're both books about books. It's called Wild About Books. This is written by Judy Sierra and illustrated by Mark Brown. What animal do we have here? We have a monkey reading a book. Hmm, that's gonna be a clue for our next song. Wild About Books. I started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let out the stair, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. At first all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. Look at all those animals. These are skinks. They have really cool tails. We'll be learning about them this summer. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn about this new something called reading. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Is your favorite zoo animal reading? Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books while geckos could only read stick to the wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right here at the zoo, such as, why are the bandicoot's books overdue? Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right. 
for the boa constrictor squeezed crictor too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up, goodnight moon with their paws, giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. Books aren't for eating, they're for reading. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off the pages. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. This says, a cannibal twig silently devours a leaf, eating, not eaten. Roll a ball of dung, any kind of poo will do, baby beetle bed. I dig for treasure in my enchanted castle, a rotten apple. That's where the millipede lives inside of an apple. And the hissing cockroach's poem is just hiss, 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 hiss. As the cheetah's new novel begins to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork, and a new to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check the books out. We can put them on shelves. And they did and they do up to this very day. Three cheers for the Zoobrary. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nests and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. What's your favorite zoo animal? What kind of books do you think that animal would read? I really like monkeys. We're going to sing a song about monkeys, five monkeys swinging in a tree. Five little monkeys swinging in a tree, teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snaps that monkey out of the tree. Four little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snaps that monkey out of the tree. Three little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile or Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snaps that monkey out of the tree. Two little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snaps that monkey out of the tree. One little monkey swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snaps that monkey out of the tree. Great job singing with me. My next book is called The Book Hog by Greg Pizzoli. What animal do we have in this one? That's a pig. So in this one, maybe, maybe not zoo animals, maybe different kinds of animals. The Book Hog loved books. And he had quite a few. He loved the way they smelled, and he loved the way the pages felt in his hooves. He especially liked the ones with pictures. He picked them up here, and there, and the garbage, anywhere he could find them. This is a bookstore. 
the book hog had a secret. Shh, a big secret. He didn't know how to read. He had never learned. He was surrounded by books, but the book hog couldn't read a single one. The book hog went to bed every night without a bedtime story. One morning, he went out looking for more books. He came to a long, low building. He smelled some books inside. Hmm, what building do you think this is? Has part of the word here. He snuck through the stacks, adding several books to his pile. But then a soft voice said, would you like to join us for story time? It was Miss Olive, the librarian. Pick out a book and I'll read it with you. The book hug blinked. He swallowed. You'll, you'll read a book? With me? Of course, said Miss Olive, as many as you'd like. This gave the book hog an idea. Wait here, he said. Hmm, what do you think his idea is? He went home. And he came back with some books. <laughs> That's a lot of books. Do you think Miss Olive is going to have time to read all of those to him? Miss Olive led story time and the book hog listened closely. He heard many stories, some funny, some sad, some kind of in between. Look at these cute little owls. Over time, with practice, the book hog learned to read on his own. He grew to love books even more, not just the way they looked and felt, but for the stories they told. And yes, the book hog still takes a lot of books. Look at all those. But he always brings them back. The end. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit of a book hog myself. Sometimes the table next to my bed looks like this, all covered in books. So our character in that story was a pig, and pigs live on a farm. So can you sing with me about a farm? Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O, with an oink oink here and an oink oink there, here an oink, there an oink, everywhere oink oink, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo moo here and a moo moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere moo moo. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a sheep, E-I-E-I-O. With a ba ba here and a ba ba there. Here ba there ba everywhere ba ba. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a horse. E-I-E-I-O, with a nay-nay here and a nay-nay there, here a nay, there a nay, everywhere a nay-nay, old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O.